Hello and welcome everyone to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Edureka. I'm Ravi. Today we shall be discussing about Java interface. So without wasting much time, let's quickly get started with our agenda for today's discussion. First, we shall understand what is an interface. Followed by that, I shall describe you what exactly a Java interface is. Then we shall understand why we need Java interface. Later, we shall begin with a practical session where I will explain you about interface declaration and few examples. After that, we shall investigate the differences between class and an interface. And finally, we shall go through some important key points about interface. I hope I'm clear with the agenda. So let's begin with our first topic. What is an interface? In simple words, an interface can be defined as anything which shares a boundary between two components. In case of computers, it separates two systems and acts as a boundary which helps in data exchange. Now, what is a Java interface? A Java interface can be defined as an abstract type which stores the methods and helps other classes to implement the behavior of the methods which an interface actually stores. Now you might get a question. We have interface for that. Yeah, absolutely. With this we begin our next question. Why we need interface? We all know that Java supports inheritance, but when it comes to multiple inheritance, Java cannot support it. It ends up facing ambiguity between two parent classes and fails to provide the required result. This particular problem is called as diamond problem. Here, as you can see, there is a superclass, and this superclass is being inherited by two classes called as class A and class B. Now we are trying to inherit the properties of class A and class B into a new class which is class C which practically seems impossible in terms of Java. Now the question would be is it seriously impossible to do it? That's when the interface come to the picture. Using interface we can achieve multiple inheritance. Here we are inheriting one class and implementing the behavior of another class. Confused? Let me explain with a little example. Let us consider an airplane which requires both the properties of carrying huge cargo and passengers. Let us assume we have two planes. One is capable only to carry passengers and the other one is capable only to carry cargo. Now we need to carry both passengers and cargo in one single plane which seems to be impossible on the basis of how the Java works. As it feels it cannot access the properties of two different parent classes at the same time. But you can make it possible by making Java feel that it is inheriting one plane and implementing the methods present in the other one. It is like building a commercial plane which takes both the passengers and cargo luggage. Interface is like making a bigger plane which could do both the tasks without interfering with the components of one another instead just borrowing the methods which are present in the interface class. Now let us get practical. First, let us understand what was the problem in multiple inheritance. Here, I have defined the first class, class A, and then the next class, which is class B, and finally the class C. Here, I am trying to inherit the properties of class A and class B together in the class C by using extends keyword. As you can see, the editor is throwing an error which says that it is not possible to inherit the properties of both the classes. Now let us find the solution for this. The solution is none other than using an interface. Here in this solution, I am creating an interface. I am having the same messages which I had in my earlier example. Both the messages present in class A and class B. And similarly, I have also defined the interface which has both the methods hello and welcome. Now let us run this program and see how does it work. As you can see, it is accessing both the methods and printing the message present in both the classes, class A and class B. Now, let us try a different example. In this example, I am declaring four methods addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, let us enter into a class. Here, I'll be trying to access all the four methods and print the output. Now, let us try to run this program and see how the output appears. As you can see, the program has been successfully compiled and now it is asking for two integer values to perform the first operation which is addition. The output has been successfully generated and now it is asking for two more integer values to perform subtraction. The difference has been displayed 
Now it is asking for two more integer values for performing the multiplication operation. The output is clear. Now let us perform our final operation, which is division. As you can see, we have our result here. Now let us understand the interface nesting. As you can see, I have nested an interface by the name inner interface inside another interface, which is the outer interface. And then I am trying to generate a Fibonacci series using the method which is present in the inner interface, which is none other than the inner method. Using this method, we will be generating the Fibonacci series. Let's try to run the program and see the output. As you can see, we have our Fibonacci series printed here, and this process was being executed from the nested inner interface method. Now let us try to see an example for nesting by nesting an interface inside a class. Here I have nested an interface called Edureka interface inside a public class, which is Edureka class. And inside the Edureka interface, I have a method called nested method using which I'll be performing a string reverse operation. Let us execute this program. As you can see, the string I have provided is Edureka, and after the operation, you can see the string has been successfully reversed. Now let us have a one short quick revision about how to declare an interface. So this is the syntax for declaring an interface where you will be using an interface keyword followed by the name of your interface and inside the interface you can declare your methods. By default all the methods which you declare in interface are considered to be public. With this let us find out the few differences between class and an interface. The first difference is multiple inheritance. Interface was designed to provide multiple inheritance where on the other hand classes cannot. The next difference is data members. Interface does not have data members. All it includes is methods which decrease the probability of confusion during the implementation process. On the other hand classes include data members which mean to say that the user must be careful while using the data members to avoid ambiguity. The next difference is constructors. Interface does not have constructors. While on the other hand classes take up the advantage by including them which will help them to set the values to the members of an object. And the next one is complete and incomplete members. Interfaces comprise of only methods which make them have only the signature methods in them. While on the other hand classes include both data members which are also called as abstract members as well as methods which are known as signature members. The next one is access modifiers. Interfaces does not have access modifiers. By default, interfaces take up public as their access modifiers, whereas classes provide private access modifiers which are not available in the interface. The next one is static members. Interface cannot have any static members, whereas class has all its members as static. With this, let us get into the major advantages and disadvantages of interface. First, let us begin with advantages. We can achieve multiple inheritance in Java. We can easily break up complexity and enable clear dependency between the objects. We can achieve loosely coupled applications through an interface. Don't just be on the bright side. Interfaces have some disadvantages as well. Java interfaces make the application slower when compared to the competitors like Python which support multiple inheritance. The next one is once an interface is included in an application, it might be used once in a while or it might end up being used multiple times at a larger scale. With this, let us discuss about the key points about Java interfaces. The first one is, can we instantiate an interface? Well, we cannot create an object of an interface. Hence, we cannot provide instances in an interface. The next one is abstraction. The major key advantage of interface is abstraction because none of the methods declared in an interface have a body. The next key point is implementing an interface. The keyword implement is used in a class to implement the methods of an interface. The method in an interface must be provided with an access modifier as public. By default, the methods declared in an interface are also considered as public. Class must implement all the methods declared in an interface or else it must be declared in an abstract class. Let us see an example about implementing an interface. Here I have defined an interface and declared two methods into the interface. Method 1 and method 2. The first method is used to find out a square root of the given number, and the second method is used to print a message. 
Now let us try to execute this program. As you can see, it is asking for an input. Now let us provide a number to find out its square root. As you can see, the square root of the given number is 4. Now let us try to execute a different example where we'll be implementing the methods from two different interfaces. As you can see, this is my first interface and here my first method is to find out whether a given number is an Armstrong number or not. And later, let us see a second interface where I have declared a method to find out if the given number is prime number or not. Now let us try to execute this example and see if the program can implement both the methods from two different interfaces or not. As you can see, the class Edureka2 has successfully implemented both the methods from interface 1 and interface 2 and displayed the output. I have given 3 as the input for finding whether it is prime number or not and the result is it is a prime number. Similarly, I have given 153 to find out if it is an Armstrong number or not and the program provided the output as it is an Armstrong number. With this, let us continue with our key points. The next one is access modifiers in an interface. Interface can be declared as private, protected and transient. All the interface methods by default are abstract and public. Variables declared in interface are public, static and final by default. Interface variables must be initialized at the time of the declaration. Otherwise, the compiler will throw an error. Inside any implementation class, you cannot change the variables declared in an interface. Let us discuss each one of these points practically. Here, I have defined an interface by name try. Here, I am trying to declare an integer type variable a using int a is equals to 10, which is valid. And similarly, you can do it by using an access modifier public, which is same as the previous one. And you can also declare this variable by using public access modifier and making it as static and final. The variable can also be declared by using final keyword and also the static keyword. All the above stand the same. Now let us see the next point which we discussed in our access modifiers. We discussed that the variables which we declare in an interface must be assigned to a value. Here I am trying to declare an integer type variable x without assigning it to any value. Now let us try to run this program and see if there is an output or not. And I'm trying to access the same x here in the main class and let's execute this program. As you can see, there is an error, which means that we were supposed to assign a value to the variable which we declared in the interface. With this, let us move on to our next stage of key points. The next one is extending an interface. An interface can extend any number of interfaces but cannot implement them. Whereas a class can implement any number of interfaces. If there are two or more same methods in different interfaces, then the class can implement all the interfaces, but one single method is enough to perform the operation. A class cannot implement two interfaces that have methods with same name but different return type. The major advantage of using an interface is that Variable name conflicts can be easily resolved by using the interface name. Let us see this practically. As you can see, here I have defined an interface A with the method display, and similarly, I have also defined an interface B with the same display method inside it. Now I am trying to implement both the interfaces A and B in my class same, and I am trying to access the display method. Let us try to execute this program and see if this runs or not. As you can see, the program has been successfully compiled and the output has been generated, which is displaying data. Now let us discuss the next point. Here I've defined an interface A, which has the variable X of integer data type, storing the value 1000. And similarly, I have also defined another interface with name B, which has the same variable X with storing different value. Now in my main program, if I try to access the variable X, then it might provide me an ambiguity. But if I use the interface name, then I can successfully access both the variables and display the data present in them without facing any of the ambiguity. Now let us execute this program and see the output. As you can see, the value of X in the first interface A was 1000, which is displayed here, and the value of X in the second interface, which is 2000, is also being displayed here. 
have used the interface name A and interface name B in the print statement provided here. With this, we have come to an end of this session on Java interface. Hope you have learned what exactly an interface is, its functions, implementing an interface, and different types of interface nesting. If you have any queries regarding this session, then please feel free to write them in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning.